Hello and welcome! Today on Lawrence Plays I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on Foundry. This game appeared on the Steam Next Fest, which was an event in October allowing various companies to offer up demos of their games for a limited time to allow us to get a sneak preview. Foundry, well, I think I'd describe it as Factorio in a Minecraft world. The landscape is made of cubes, and your character has a little drill that can remove these blocks to aid landscaping, tunnelling and so on. But on the Factorio side, you have the various machines and belts which can be linked together in production chains, allowing you to mine up ore, purify it, smelt it, make it into components, and then make science packs. It's all very familiar stuff. In case this is the first video you've watched on my channel, I should probably start off by saying that I've played about 2,000 hours of Factorio, and so the automation side of the game felt very familiar to me. OK, some of the names have changed. Iron is now known as Xenoferrite and Copper is Technum, but you can still make mechanical parts from the former and wire from the latter. This familiarity with Factorio is both a blessing and a curse. I'm very, very familiar with the concept of connecting all these systems together, so the learning curve was very easy to climb. But I also have a lot of muscle memory that isn't quite right for this game. I remapped the keys to be as close to the Factorio ones as possible, but I still found myself pressing Q to try to get rid of an item from my hands, or trying to take something directly from inventory to build in the world. I don't mean this as a criticism of Foundry, but I do want to explain my starting point for this game, as I'm sure I will have a lot of unconscious biases and expectations. The first thing I want to say about the game is that I like the art style. It's a lovely mix of cartoony plants and satisfying landscapes. The world comes together nicely. There are the weird giant mushrooms and strange rock outcroppings that you can demolish, all covering a landscape of gently rolling hills. I found a reasonably flat valley area to set up my factory, and decided to try to follow the contours of the ground rather than enforce a completely flat foundation, and I'm glad I did. The viewers on my first stream encouraged me to bury the foundations so that the factory started to blend in with the landscape, keeping the buildings at ground level, and I think this makes it look a lot nicer. It's more part of the world rather than having been dropped in on top of it. But of course, the factory enforcing its shape on the land is an alternative aesthetic and an equally valid one. I would like to see a bit more smoothing of the natural world though. If the original landscape was smooth from the very cubey vision we have at the moment, it would make it even more striking when everything gets organised by the player into neat straight lines. I've seen the No Cubes mod for Minecraft achieve this too, to a certain level, and so I'm sure it's possible if it's implemented as a core part of the game. As you wander around the world, there are various ore patches to discover and to plunder, which is initially reminiscent of Factorio. The first couple of patches I used were on the surface, and, and quite visible. However, because you're wandering around at ground level, they can be a little tricky to find. Fortunately, you start off with a scanner which sends out a ping drawing your attention to any patches within range. This is a massive improvement, um, in, in, in my opinion, over Minecraft's mechanic which requires you to do large amounts of exploratory mining and tunnelling and just hope you get lucky and run into the resources you need. I'm definitely a fan of the scanner. After I tapped my first two patches, I was hoping that later in the game I would find resources that were further underground, requiring a mine shaft to be dug, or the area to be strip mined to get to the resources, and I wasn't disappointed. The third resource I found was coal by any other name, and that was about three or four blocks down below the surface. Close enough not to be a problem, it was easy to get at, but still deep enough to be interesting and to allow me to make a small underground mine, which I then covered over with earth so I wouldn't fall in the hole. Later on, I discovered a patch of minerals for making concrete. This was much further underground than the coal had been, and would have been really annoying to excavate to with the hand drill. However, luckily, I'd been able to make some of the coal into explosives, and was able to literally blast away the earth covering the minerals. This was very satisfying, and running a spiral belt up out of the mine was another highlight for me. I would like the game to include a more effective mining drill, perhaps one that clears out a 3x3x3 cube, or perhaps a 3x3 square each time you use it. This would allow for a more controlled but still faster method of excavating, and avoid the occasional explosive accidents that I had. Progression was very familiar. I started off with mines and belts, assembly machines and labs, plus of course inserters and burner generators. Then, through the magic of science packs, I was able to unlock more specialised machines, faster belts, steam turbines and so on. It feels like you're building on a much smaller scale than I'm used to, but the game is balanced around this scale. 
I found that by the end of the demo, I had two miners on the iron patch that were feeding four purifiers, then eight smelters, and this produced a single tier two belt's worth of iron plates, which was enough to run my factory at a sensible speed. And whilst I'd set up all of the machines I needed by hand, it didn't feel like a chore. It wasn't too repetitive because there were variations in the world and things to think about, like how to get the power to this area, how to run the belts in and out, that sort of thing. Speaking of power, I found the initial system both good and bad. On the one hand, having foundation plates which are required under buildings and also conduct the power to them meant you didn't have a tangle of cables running through the air around the factory with the inexplicable invisible connections between a pylon and the buildings near it. But on the other hand, there were many times when I had to fiddle around a bit, running foundation under belts, in order to make sure that the power connections remained linked up. This got even more complicated with multiple levels, uh, however I will blame this mostly on me not concentrating hard enough. <laughs> running this foundation out to the mines was a bit of a pain too, however a bit later on I researched high voltage power transmission lines which can then be used to link more distant outposts in. This felt much nicer but unfortunately I didn't research them until after I'd already built all the outposts I needed. Uh, that's probably on me though. A better system for laying them down, like Factorio's click and drag method, would have been much appreciated, but it's, it's a good step forwards. The power issues might have been less noticeable if I'd just built a massive rectangular platform of foundation to cover the entire area I wanted to fit my factory into, but that wasn't the aesthetic I was going for, so I guess I had to suffer for my art. Since all the machines require foundation to provide power and to allow them to work, the first step of construction is always planning your design, digging out space for the foundations and laying them down. This added an extra step to the building process and I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it. It was a bit annoying sometimes when I miscounted the size of a machine for a foundation, it turns out counting to three is harder than it looks, and having the extra step before just dropping things into place did make it feel a bit slower and, and more fiddly and it made it harder to prototype, but it gave me something else to think about and, and added a bit onto the process, making the designs feel a bit more deliberate and permanent rather than just scattering buildings across the landscape. It reminded me a little bit of the first major real-time strategy game, Dune 2, which also required foundations under buildings to prevent them from deteriorating. Perhaps an alternative tool would help, one which replaces blocks of earth with bo blocks of foundation from your inventory in a single step, rather than requiring you to dig a trench and then fill it back in again. The first person perspective is different and interesting, again being more on the Minecraft side than the Factorio side. To an extent, I think this viewpoint is quite nice, it gives you a much more up close and personal view of the factory, making it feel a lot more real and makes you feel like you are the engineer instead of just controlling them from a distance. But on the other hand, it makes it harder to see what's going on. I found myself getting stuck on machines or inserters quite a bit, and sometimes struggling to get my character into position, which often got me stuck with a face full of machine. I think this is largely down to my clumsiness, but it did keep happening and was a minor annoyance, especially because I was playing the game on stream, and I worried that these sort of moments would be a bit disorientating for the viewer. Both Factorio and Dyson Sphere program get around this problem by giving you a third person view, allowing you to interact with things a bit further away from your character, and especially with the long reach mod, it's often a case of get your character into about the right area, and then you just build stuff around them without worrying too much about where they're standing. That's not the case in Foundry. You have to move yourself around so you can see what you're working on, and if you're digging or configuring a machine, you have to be very close for it to work. Building is easier, you seem to be able to build things at a significantly longer range than you can mine and configure. Speaking of configuring things, I do think that the range at which you can interact with the panels on your machines needs to be a bit longer. I frequently found that I had to clamber around over the inserters for a machine in order to be able to grab a stack of belts out of it, and this added a minor annoyance to keeping my inventory topped up. I also had a few issues with the user interface when placing items down. When you're placing a belt, you get these nice blue arrows showing up in the world to show you how you can drag it. And this is fine, it's a nice indicator of what you're building, but the arrows have a real physical size, which meant that a number of times I'd end up with a blue arrow almost completely filling my vision, which was not helpful. I had a similar problem a few times with the building ghosts filling my view. This was usually less bad because it was information I was more interested in and they were still partially transparent and because I could dismiss them when I didn't want them, but I still think a bit of work in this area could give some huge improvements to the game. 
I've been trying to be sympathetic with this review, partly because I know the game is still in early access, this isn't supposed to be a finished product, and also because despite the complaints of the last few minutes, I definitely enjoyed playing it. Uh, it gave me some of the exploratory fun of a Minecraft world without a lot of the grindy elements that I don't like, and was also a new dimension on Factorio. I shall definitely be keeping an eye on this one as it gets developed further, and look forward to revisiting it in a year or two to see how things have changed. Did you get a chance to play the demo? What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments. Maybe check out the stream recordings if you'd like to see my opinions in a bit more depth and as they were forming. And don't forget to subscribe and enjoy the rest of my content. Thanks for watching.